All right, guys, in a little bit, I'm basically going to be grabbing some of these items off my shelf. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to go with, but I've been seeing a lot about Just Car Power Lock. Also with the trusty Colonite 845 combo. So basically, this is one of the famous combos out there. Um, this is a combo that, um, that was introduced to me from Obsessed Garage. If you guys haven't watched that channel... It's probably one of my favorite channels out there. I'm basically going to be doing a full decon wash, meaning you know stripping all the wax, stripping all the sealants, whatever's on my car right now. Um, I had a spray sealant on the vehicle. Um, I'm currently not using any um, ceramic coating right now because I like testing, obviously, a lot of different different products. Um, I'm not really married to one brand. So this is my current setup where we are allowed to wash our vehicles in my condo. So basically what happens is I hook up a hose right over here. I use a screwdriver, I open the water valve. Obviously what people set up, it's totally different. So whether you have a condo or a apartment building that allows you to wash your car, that's good. If not, then you're gonna have to look for a waterless solution or even um, go into those automatic car washes or somewhere where you're allowed to use a hose or go to a friend's house. So what sucks right now is actually, it's hot and muggy and it's, it just rains. So the humidity is pretty bad right now. So in a little bit, I'm gonna hook up the hose and everything, get things started. Um, obviously with the first step, like I always said in my other videos, you're gonna basically start with the wheels first. As you can see, the car looks clean from a distance, but believe me, uh, it's pretty dirty. So like I said, it looks clean on camera, but it's dirty, at least dirty for my standards. Hopefully the camera can pick this up. You can kind of see all the dirt right over here. Obviously the wheels are really dirty. Stock OEM brakes produce a lot of brake dust. Like I said, this is probably not dirty for other people's standards, but for my standards, it's dirty. But this is really not about that. This is really about getting the car um, prepped for this Saturday's event. I also wanted to mention too, so as of right now, I'm not gonna be doing a full paint correction. My car does not need it. Um, every time you basically do a paint correction, you're taking a microscopic layer of clear coat. Um, obviously that's not gonna affect you too much, but I don't wanna basically do that right now. It doesn't need it. Um, there's maybe one or two uh, light scratches on top of the carbon fiber roof. And I'll talk a little bit later about ways you could basically minimize um, having scarring or marring onto, onto your paint. And a lot of those methods I'm going to be doing is the two bucket method, um, utilizing a foam gun or foam cannon. I don't have foam cannon because I live in a condo where it's hard for me to plug into a electrical outlet. And the only solution right now is for me to basically use a foam gun. And I don't need an electrical outlet for that. Hook up to the hose and I'm good to go. So like I said, what I'm doing now is just attaching the hose to the outlet right here. And just so I'm not leaving my brushes or anything onto the ground, I'm gonna use my grid guard to elevate it from the concrete floor. All right, so some of the tools I like to use is a IK foamer. You don't need to use this all the time. Um, what's good about this, it allows you to basically apply the product onto your wheels evenly in a nice thick foam. So what I have here is a mixture between PNS Brake Buster along with a mixture of water. So what it does, it utilizes air obviously to make the foam. So you can't fill it up all the way to the top. Um, if you need more questions or any questions about this itself, shoot a comment or shoot a question below and I'll be happy to answer it. And another reason why you wanna start with your wheels first is because, I know I mentioned it in my other video, but if you haven't watched that video, I'll link it up on top and also in the description. So the main thing is you don't wanna leave hard standing water on your car while you wash the rest of your car, meaning there's mineral deposits in the water um, that if you leave it standing onto your paint and it dries up, it could leave a stain or even um, watermarks. And if you don't know anything about watermarks, they're hard to get off. So I also wanted to mention too, living in a condo, it's hard for me to have a pressure washer, um, because storage space is not accessible that much. So I gotta minimize as much space as possible. So that's another reason why I don't have one. So I know a lot of you guys are wondering if I'm a 
car guy, why am I using that? Because um, I just don't have the space. So I'm gonna rinse this off, get all rinsed off, all the contaminants, wherever's on it. And I'm gonna start with the barrels. And also, if you guys don't understand, um, your tires are very dirty. So your tires have a lot of contaminants on it um, from the road grime and also from just being out on the, you know, the road and stuff. It's gonna get soaked up of all that gunk and, and garbage. And this is not Adams, this is a PNS uh, brake buster. And this is something I'm gonna use to basically uh, take all that contaminants off. So you could use a more of a abrasive brush, but I don't think, for me, I don't think I need it. Um, this brush gets into all the crevices on the tires itself, so it's not bad. And some of the spots that people forget is inside the lug nuts. And right by your valve stem too. That's something that's missed a lot, and a lot of brake dust gets caked on there, and you don't want that to happen. This is just a mitt I bought from Amazon, and if you guys are interested about this, I'll leave the link in the bottom of the description. Um, but basically, what's good about this is that it allows you to get the big surface area of the rims. Um, for now, it's gonna shorten my time of washing the rims instead of using like a little microfiber towel. It also prevents you from scratching your hands, you know, from both sides, from a lot of the jagged edges of your rims. And I'm just gonna spray a little bit more product on there. Why not? Your next step would be to rinse it off. As you can see, the wheel coating is holding up. You can see it's uh, still beating water, doing its job. So, pretty impressed. I'm gonna be rinsing the rims off, and right here you're gonna see a lot of the brake dust come off. So now I'm going to take you to a closer view of exactly what the PNS brake buster does and also what the IK former does. Of your wheel well. As you can see the wheel well from here this angle, you can see it's pretty dirty. So this is another good brush to get inside pretty deep. Um, but right here we have Obsessed Garage decontamination soap. What I did was I mixed it in my soap bucket here and also have a bucket of clean water in the red bucket. So after you finish washing the wheels and that's all done, uh, your next step would be to actually fill your buckets up with the soap and also the clean water to have that dual bucket method. Um, once you're done with that, you're also going to look into uh, rinsing the car off, taking all the contaminants or any of the dirt and dust, road grime off the car. If you guys could pick up the exterior noise of all the everything else going on, sorry about that. So obviously I live in a condo where I can't control that, so. So a lot of your dirt and dust is actually going to be right over here, because obviously your tires kick up all that rain and whatever gunk. So I would pay extra attention to rinsing that portion off. And inside here is actually, obviously I said earlier, it's going to be the Obsessed Garage uh, decontamination soap. And what I said earlier, this, um, this soap is allowing a sense of lubrication onto the paint before you apply your mitt onto it. So this is another step if you're willing to take the extra step to um, prevent any marring or scratches. I know that some people may think it's excess, but there's multiple different types of car guys, and I'm that type of car guy. And nothing really beats a foam cannon, but this, this will have to do because I don't have that opportunity of using a foam cannon with a, you know, a pressure washer. The show is gonna be on May 30th. And what we're doing is we're throwing an event for BMW Invasion. And I'm actually wearing one of the shirts right now. And you'll see me, I'll be wearing this shirt a lot more. One, because it's comfortable, you know, and it's dry fit, so right now I'm just sweating a lot. And it's a great shirt to use, especially on a situation like this. 
But hopefully all this exterior noise is not too much where it's becoming annoying, because I know how it could be. But if you notice the difference between the sound now and previous videos is that I actually upgraded to a Sennheiser G4 and it should sound better. All right, so that was level D. Let's switch over to level E. As you can see, it's more of a thicker foam now. That means it's more concentrated. But pretty much the car is completely covered with um, the suds. So like I mentioned earlier, this is not really ideal to do a full decon wash and all that stuff because I'm limited to the tools that I would need, but sometimes you have to do what you have, you know? And to be honest, if this is the best I have, I'm not complaining. It's doing its job. So like I mentioned earlier, this is the two bucket method. I got my clean water there. I'm gonna dip it into my soap bucket, get all the soap here. And what you wanna do is start from the top to bottom. And the reason why you wanna start with the top to bottom is because a lot of your dirt and road grime is gonna be towards the bottom. So you don't wanna be taking the dirtiest part to go onto the top, it wouldn't make sense. So my key tip too is to rinse it into the rinse bucket multiple times throughout the wash and dip it into the soap bucket because you have ample opportunity of grabbing all this luxurious suds to put onto your car. So why be um, stingy about it? And also utilize both sides of the mitt. So once this side's done, flip it to the other side and go with it. And it's funny too, I got my neighbors walking by. They're thinking like, why does this guy have a camera out? But it's fine. And I'll tell you this, this car has a lot of bead maker on there. And bead maker, if you don't know, look it up. It's really good. So if you guys don't know, bead maker is pretty good. It's really good actually. Um, I use it as a drying agent after every single car wash. And what that does, it provides another layer of protection over your sealant or wax or ceramic coating. Um, and it also applies a lot of gloss onto your paint. I probably should take the keys out of my pocket because you, you guys are gonna be hearing that all day. Dip it into the rinse bucket and it goes back into the soap bucket. But a lot of people think this is way too much to do, but to be honest, for me, it relaxes me. Especially a long week of work to wash a your car yourself and to do it yourself. You see the satisfaction after. If you could, if you could relate to that, you know, shoot a comment below. Let, let me know because this is relaxing to me. And I also wanted to mention too, there's multiple different types of car guys. So there's the car guys that will take care of the car, right? Bring it to a car wash, get it washed. There's a car guy that would wash it themselves, maybe not through the two bucket method, and we'll take precautions and utilize some of the good soaps out there. Um, and then there's a car guy like me that takes it to the next step, utilizing the two bucket method, um, utilizing foam gun, foam cannons, and anything more than that would be a different level, which I'm not at that level yet. Once I get my house, I'll get to that level. The car is all washed, I'm gonna rinse it off. Here's a good way to see if um, the soap actually did its job. You can kind of see that the water is just staying flat there. That means it stripped a lot of the, you know, sealants or even the wax that I had on the car. So, obsessed garage, pretty good. So the next step will be Iron X. If you guys haven't smelled this, it smells horrible. Uh, my fiance was like, what, what does that smell? It smells like rotten eggs. And to be honest, it kind of smells like that. Uh, but what this is gonna do is take down all the iron composites or deposits that's on the paint, and you'll see it. If I do have a lot of it, you're gonna see it going on clear, and once it activates onto those particles, it's gonna turn purple. So I'm gonna go liberally on this. And this is something I don't do a lot, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go very liberally onto the paint. And to be honest, the car is parked mostly in the parking garage. And it's rarely out dealing with all the contaminants, but sometimes they will be. 
what I find a lot of the contaminants are actually towards the back area, towards your exhaust. As you can see right over here, some of the purpling. There's really not a lot. It's like I said, this car is mainly parked inside. But you can see slightly right over here, there's a little bit, a little bit more right over here. There's really not a lot. But to be honest, it's so hard to vlog and, and wash the car at the same time. So if you guys are learning something from this, hit the thumbs up. It really helps my channel grow. But I really appreciate it. So basically, I just rinsed the car off completely. Uh, the Iron X is off. Waiting for this bucket to fill up and putting some soap in. The next step would be rewashing the car again. So just rewash the car with um, Adam's car shampoo. And you can see like the water that's coming off the car, it just, instead of like beating off, it's more of a sheeting and it's sticking onto the car. So I know that the decontamination soap and also the Iron X did its job. All right guys, so now that the car has been washed with Obsessed Garage decontamination soap, also with Iron X, I sprayed that all over the car, rinsed it off, then I rewashed the car on top of that. So the next step right now is to use Car Pro Eraser. And what this does is it's gonna allow me to basically get the paint and surface bare. So when I apply the wax and seal it onto it, it bonds better. So I'm gonna spray it on the car and wipe it off. And to be honest, you probably have people out there that are professionals and they're thinking I should be doing it a different way. And what's good about car detailing that there's no one right way to do it. There's obviously a method, but everybody has their own way of doing it. So this is my way of doing it. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, then it is what it is. And just to see the condition of the paint, the paint's pretty much flawless. So the front's pretty much protected with paint protection film. So I'm not gonna have any issues there. The mirror caps is also protected with paint protection film. And there's really no scratches. So it would be unnecessary for me to polish the car right now. As you can see, there's really nothing going on. All right, the next step is to use Just Car Power Lock. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to put on and it's easy to take off. I know Obsessed Garage and many other people recommend this. And there's always a saying, a little goes a long, a long way, but to be honest, not a lot of us actually practice that. All right, so just checking in right now. So I just finished the roof of the car with just cars, the hood, this panel, driver's side door. I applied one coat here. I'm gonna wipe it off in a little bit. And also on this panel. All right, so just wiped it all off. As you can see, it's really shiny now. There's still so much more work to do. So what I'm gonna do is basically just finish applying the Just Car Power Lock. It's really hot, as you can see. I'm sweating like a dog here. So in a little bit, I'm gonna finish this up and then I'm gonna let it cure overnight. Tomorrow I'm gonna wipe it down a little bit and then um, I'm gonna apply uh, Call 845 on top of it. All right guys, it's day two of preparation for BMW Invasion's Detail Garage Rally. Yesterday was pouring rain all day and it made it a little bit difficult to get the job done. Uh, number one, it was so super humid. So a lot of the wax, or actually, so to say, a lot of the sealant that I put on, which was Just Cars um, Power Lock, it took a little while to get off. It's still easy of breeze. Um, what I realized is that 
using a microfiber applicator pad was a horrible idea. There's really no grip to, um, I guess, have it onto the paint. So today we're gonna use, cause that, that whole process is done. So today we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna use a hex applicator pad. This is something similar. Um, I have downstairs waiting in the car right now. All right guys, we are back in the parking garage. So as you saw yesterday, I basically put on just car power lock, put a nice coat of that on the vehicle. And to be honest, feels like wet glass. Feels good. I don't feel any issues or contaminants or any dust on it. I did a quick inspection of the vehicle and see anything. Um, so today we're gonna use Kona A45, as you can see right here. These two combos are gonna be doing a wonderful combo actually. So I'll see how it looks later on. This is a combo that a lot of people recommend. Um, and it's not too expensive. Just car power lock, I think it ran me about 30 bucks. And this is uh, roughly about 20 something dollars, maybe $30. Yeah, this is a lot more easier. Using a foam applicator pad, it's gonna make the process a lot more easier. I should have had this yesterday, to be honest. I think I mentioned yesterday, ideally I would want a, you know, a house with a garage. Um, with the house with the garage, the garage is gonna have a drain inside the garage where I can basically wash the car and not have any issues. And I would have it like obviously AC, temperature controlled, what we call a dream, right? And to be honest, sure, I could have went to a detail place or you know a car wash and get it waxed. But to be honest, there's nothing better than the satisfaction of doing it yourself. Um, whether you can relate to that, you know, let me know in the comments. Or are you the type of person that would rather pay for somebody to do it? Me personally, it relaxes me. Um, I normally throw on a podcast, you know, something educational. I listen to like real estate podcasts. Listen to bigger pockets. You know, kind of educate yourself while relaxing. I also wanted to mention too, if you guys like these type of videos where I'm doing like a full wash, uh, or even like a wash video, let me know because um, I enjoy doing these. It is really not easy filming these videos. <laughs> Trying to set up these cameras in the right angle in the right spots. Make it happen though, all right? So Friday, I got a busy day. I'm gonna be going down to Miami, filming Baca's car, uh, getting detailed. That means paint polish, uh, paint corrected, because it really needs it, like I mentioned. But um, addition with that, we got a couple more surprises that we're gonna have done. Can't really say too much, but it's something that I haven't seen that's been done at an event um, times five. Addition with that, I had to come back home, uh, get this car washed, like a quick maintenance wash, because everything that's gonna need to be done is being done you know, yesterday and today. So if you guys don't know, a major reason why you wanna wax your car is because the same way you put sunblock on when you go out to the beach or to the pool is that it protects the car from the UV rays. The UV rays can be very damaging to your clear coat along with your interior and everything else. That's why there's like many different various products out there for that. If you guys didn't believe me that this car didn't need paint correction, if you are here Saturday, then come check out the car. It's gonna be in the front of the store of Detail Garage in Miami. You'll be able to check out the paint yourself and you'll definitely see. Paint's good. It doesn't need to be polished. I wanted to mention, I'm not going to bring it outside to show you a little bit more about the car because it looks like it's about to rain, so I'm not going to bring it outside and ruin all the hard work I have. So I still wanted to cure overnight, so I'm not going to drive the car. I'm going to leave it parked. Um, but besides that, I'm going to show you as best as possible to show you exactly how the car looks like right now. And bear in mind, I'm in a parking garage, and the lighting here is not the best. This is outside my parking garage and you can kind of see it's about to rain. All right, so it's all done right now. I did the interior too. I cleaned it and also conditioned it. So pretty much the car is 99% done. Um, 
the 1% is going to be the PNS bead maker after I do the maintenance wash. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. One more drink, or one more Bacardi, one more dance at this after party. We still going, going strong. Going strong, going strong. Feet so fast, like a Ferrari. We get wild, like a Safari. We still going, going strong. Going strong, going strong. And all of these good things, good things, good things.